how to make gradient nozzles in Clip Studio Paint. Go to the Marquee tool. Select Ellipse in the Subtool panel. Hold the Shift key down to create a circular selection. Go to the Gradient tool. Select a gradient in the Subtool panel. Manipulate it in the Subtool Detail panel. Go to the Ink category and set the Blending Mode to Normal. Apply the gradient to the selection. To see if you're happy with the gradient, you'll probably want to change it in the Subtool Detail panel. Not totally happy with that, but I'm going to go to the Advanced section and click the Reverse because I want the black to be on the other side. Click OK. Apply it again. Yep, I'm happier with that. Reapply the gradient with the origin placed at the top left of the sphere. The key thing is that highlight. Basically, you want a black edge with a bright central point. I want it as a brush, so go to the Edit menu and Register Material and Image. Give your new brush a name. To use as a brush, go to the bottom of the panel and click that Use for Brush Tip Shape. Go to the location and then select image material and brush. Click OK. Go to the selection area menu and deselect and now go to the edit menu and fill, fill the entire document with the current color. In this case, white. Go to the figure tool and then go to the sub tool panel and select saturated line. Select the first entry. I want to revert to the original state. Right click and use the revert command. Here is a quick example. Go to the window menu and sub tool detail. For destination layer, select the second entry. Go to the brush size entry and increase the value. At the moment, all you can see is the solid color, in this case, black. In drawing interval, go to the gap of line and decrease the value. Set anti-aliasing to the max. Tip shape. Click on material. Click on the section below and add the shape. Scroll for the brush that you created earlier. Click OK and now you can see your gradient brush tip. Go to the stroke category. There you can find the gap setting or spacing so you can space the spheres out a bit more. Go to the gap and then click the first little dot. That's a fixed option. Set the size of the gap. Go to the brush size category again and change the size. Use the preview to see how big or small you want it. You can also add some disarray. That's the randomization for the size of the brush. Go to the document and apply a saturated line. Fills the entire screen in seconds. It is a layer, so if you don't want it, you can always remove it. Go to any part of the image, draw a big circle or small circle, and then release the mouse to draw the saturated line layer. If you want to fill the entire document, draw the circle very small. That will fill the entire document. Of course, what you can also do is just apply it multiple times. Hold the Command or Control key down and you will see these control points. And these control points can then be manipulated to create all kinds of designs. Go to the Subtool Detail panel and go to the Saturated Line category, the top one, and select Make Curve. With the Make Curve on, you can manipulate the red line. You can curve it. You can distort it in many more ways. The Make Curve brings a whole load of new features to this layer. It means you can twist and distort the design in all kinds of ways. Via the control points, you can also rotate and scale the layer. You can change the origin point to modify the saturated line. The circle figure that was used to create the design is made up of multiple control points. So you can individually select a point and then move that 
to radically change the brush direction. You can always flatten the image. Flatten all the layers. Just go to Layer Menu and Flatten Image. And then you can apply blurs and other filters. Go to the Subtool Detail panel and change the gap of line. Change it maybe to a, a greater value so you get thinner lines applied on top of the existing image. Apply a number of new layers and then go to Layer Menu and Flatten Image. You can also apply different gradient brushes. Perhaps go to the subtool detail and then go to the brush tip and select a different brush. Go to the existing brush tip, click on that little arrow and then select a new brush tip. Select any of the brushes, then click OK and then just go and apply that new saturated line. You can repeat this with many brush tips. Save your work and then go to the edit menu, fill with the current colour to create a fresh document. I'm going for the second saturated line option. Now I want to revert it, so I'm just going to right click and revert. Go to the subtool detail panel and select the second entry. Click make curve. Go to the continuous curve category. For the curve, Go for the second option. You could also use the other options, perfectly valid as well. Go to the brush size and set the size to a very large value. Go to the gap of line, set the size small to get really crunched in lines. Go to ink category and set blending to normal. Set anti-aliasing to the max. Go to brush tip and material. Click on the section below, display the brush tips, select the gradient brush, click OK. Go to direction and right side and click and randomize the direction. Go to the stroke category to change the gap. Select the small circle, the first entry, enter your fixed gap or spacing. Go to drawing interval, decrease the gap of line and increase grouping. Click on the document to add points to create a very small curve. The generated saturated line is applied only in a very localised area. The rest of the document is untouched. Hold down the command or control key. You can then rotate the layer. You can move it around the document. You can rotate it, scale it and much more. You can also manipulate that red curve. By just changing some parts of that curve, you can literally twist and twirl the design in all kinds of ways. You can have those spheres flying off in different directions just by simple twists of the curve. Just move the origin point and turn and twist. You can also select the blue curve and manipulate the control points on that. Pull the control points up or down or left or right and drag those spheres all over the place. You can also go to the red or blue line and right click and select the add points to add additional points to the line, allowing you to manipulate the line even more. You can then continue to scale and distort the curve as well as the control points. Experiment with all kinds of ways of manipulating the curve. Once you're happy with the design, either go and create a new layer or perhaps go and flatten the image. Export the work or go to edit menu and register it as material. You can duplicate the layer and then continue to work with that design. Or layer menu and flatten image. Clear the document via the edit menu and fill. Instead of working with just one layer, you can work with 5, 10, 15 layers. Just keep adding layers on top of each other. With each apply of the saturated line, you can see an additional layer has been added to the layer panel. You can manipulate each of those layers in turn. If you want to save the subtools you've created, go to the subtool panel. The subtool contains all the settings such as gap. Go to the subtool you have generated, right click and use the duplicate command to duplicate it and right click again and revert back to the original factory setting. You now have the two original subtools as well as two new subtools. So if you work with a subtool, you change the settings and then you think, I want to save this. 
you can just duplicate it and then you can just revert to the original settings. Now you can do that anytime. Whenever you change any settings, you can always revert at any point. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the GraphicX channel. Always add in new Clip Studio paint tutorials all the time. Also, please add some comments as well as a like or dislike. Thank you much.